we can't over plan the process of science. The tools that we used for optogenetics, they have their deepest roots 150 years ago. The very first experiment on July 1st, 2004, I was trying multiple strategies in parallel. The microbial options were only one of them. In some ways, it was the highest risk strategy. It was, in some ways, it was the least likely to work. These genes come from all the way across the tree of life. And so it took us about, you know, five to seven years between 2004 and, uh, you know, 2011 or 12 to really put together all the parts that made optogenetics work in a versatile and generalizable way. I have to say it worked far better than I had even dared to hope. It was a, it was a very challenging time in, in life. And this was a very different thing that uh, was not necessarily well suited to the, the laboratories of systems neuroscience at the time. People didn't have capability for using viruses, using optics and behaving animals, doing cell type targeting. I would hear through the grapevine, oh, you know, we tried that optogenetics thing, it didn't work. Very stressful for me as a pre-tenure, you know, and, and all the other challenges of life going on. What I did was I, I started little courses, little hands-on uh, in-person courses where people could come from all over the world and they brought it back to their home institutions where they could teach everybody. And it was sort of a democratization of the technology. It was very hard for me to let up on that intensity because realizing each little bit of energy I put in would be so valuable for, for the scientific community. Yeah, there, 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 were, uh, there were some sleepless nights. We haven't had the, the, the principled level of understanding the organ of the brain that we have for other organs in the body, and that's made it really hard. But together, clinical neuroscience is, is moving quickly these days, and uh, the hope for the future is, is quite bright.